Morning everyone. Um, so for the last two classes here we've been focusing mainly on what's referred to as a voltaic cell. Uh, today we're actually going to switch over to an electrolytic cell. Uh, I just wanted to just give you a quick overview again. Uh, what are the key differences? We're still going to be using the exact same table, reading it in exactly the same fashion, uh, voltages, everything is identical uh, except for the key differences that we point out right now. Uh, so again, um, recently here they had changed this terminology, uh, electrochemical cell. Electrochemical cell used to be the name for what we now call voltaic cell. Electrochemical is now um, the umbrella term. We've been focusing mainly on a voltaic cell. Uh, voltaic cell here, also called a galvanic cell, also called a Daniel cell here. Uh, what I want to imply for a voltaic cell, we're trying to run a spontaneous chemical reaction uh, to produce uh, electrical energy. Right? So this is essentially our battery. Uh, we have chemicals in the battery here. When I plug the battery into a device, I expect it to um, give me some current and actually uh, run an electrical device. What we're going to switch gears today and go to is something called an electrolysis or electrolytic cell is another way of saying that. Electrolytic. Uh, we're actually going to use electricity. Lysis or lytic actually refers to breaking. Use electricity to cause some reaction to occur. In this case here, it's the same reactions that we're studying, the same table and all that, but it turns out when we try to look it up on the table, the reaction that we're wanting to occur is actually a non-spontaneous reaction. Uh, so a non-spontaneous reaction is run using electrical energy. So it's still this interplay between uh, chemical energy and electrical energy, but this time I'm focusing more on chemistry. Um, I want a reaction to occur in a certain fashion. Right now, unfortunately, it's non-spontaneous, so I'm going to provide some external voltage and actually cause uh, the reaction to occur. So electrolysis, I uh, just basically define this for you here. It's a process where uh, electrical energy is used <coughs> to run non-spontaneous reactions. Otherwise, they would not occur. All right. So we're going to use this electric energy. Uh, first, let's make a sort of high-level comparison before we di dig into the details. Again, they're using the old name for electrochemical. Now that's been an umbrella term. Now we actually want to call these just voltaic cells. On the other side here are the electrolytic cells. <coughs> We had mentioned already here uh, for electro for a voltaic cell, we're going to have two half cells. Right, I want to have some way of actually tapering off the electrical energy. Uh, two half cells uh, connected by uh, an external wire. That's where the electrons flow, anode to cathode, and also a salt bridge. That was because if you just put the chemicals together given a chance to react, they're going to react. This time for a new electrolytic cell, because we already are talking, the reaction is non-spontaneous, totally okay for you to just have one cell. Uh, that means we don't need any external wiring, we don't need any salt bridge, it's a lot simpler in that sense, uh, but it's still going to consist on very similar components. Uh, one cell consisting of two electrodes. We could still have one anode and one cathode, uh, exactly the same. Uh, we're going to have an electrolyte, so I'm going to have a electrically conducting solution, which we also had in the uh, elect uh, the voltaic case, uh, but it's a lot simpler. I don't need any membrane, I don't need anything separating them, because otherwise they wouldn't react, uh, the reaction is non-spontaneous anyways. So for a voltaic cell here, we wanted to run a spontaneous reaction. We had calculated last day all spontaneous reactions have a E cell that's bigger than zero, it's a positive E cell. Uh, for electrolytic cell that we're going to switch to uh, over the next two classes, it's non-spontaneous overall. By the time you get to E cell, so that's going to be adding the reduction in oxidation potential of both half cells, the E cell is actually negative. These guys here otherwise won't react. So we're going to see very clearly like which ones are electrolytic. We basically really only have the single container. I have everything there. They're just not going to react because it's non-spontaneous. What we're going to do is we're going to actually supply an external power supply. That's going to be the last bit. And an external um, <coughs> external power supply or a battery of some sort. 
and we're going to put a battery to actually run the chemical reaction. I'm using the circuit symbol for a battery here. The long line is always the positive side. The short line is always a, uh, the negative. They can have any number of long lines, short lines. Technically speaking, each of these is an electrochemical cell in itself, and these are all hooked up in series, and that ends up making a battery. So we will still have an external wire, but this time that wire, even though electrons will flow through that wire, they don't naturally, um, without this battery here, there would be no reaction anyways. We still want the electrons to flow anode to cathode. Uh, this is one key difference that we're going to see. Uh, because it's totally up to us which way we hook up the battery, if I flip the battery around, I can run a totally different reaction. We're going to find that for us, uh, the anode, the site of oxidation, is actually going to be the positive for an electrolytic cell. And the cathode uh, is going to be um, where things uh, gain electrons. Uh, the reason why the, I need to point the positive end of the battery as the anode side, you can think about anode as a site of oxidation. It's the location where uh, electrons get dropped off. If I point the negative end of the battery to the side which is already negative, those electrons have no desire to actually come up. Uh, I actually want to have the positive end to actually draw the electrons up. Again, it's only because of the batteries that can cause the electrons to flow. The battery will push it on through the battery. As the electrons arrive on the other side, they're going to encounter the repulsion from the negative terminal, and they're going to get pushed over here, and therefore they can have the site of reduction. Uh, the location of where it happens is the cathode. Uh, let's compare that to an electrochemical cell. We had the um, two cells because we wanted to uh, make sure the electrons flowed through the wire. This time the reaction was spontaneous. Spontaneously, let's say this is anode again, this is the site of oxidation. This side here happens to be dropping off the electrons. Usually the metal plate would actually jump into solution here. The anode is actually negative because the negatives are already building up. As they build up here, it's that common negative charge that actually pushes them also anode over to cathode. But you'll notice here that the cathode is actually the relatively positive side. It may very well just be neutral. But comparing to a side that's picking up a lot of electrons, a lot of electrons are being dropped off here, uh, even a charge of zero will be more positive relatively than a negative side. So just note that, uh, yes, electrons are always going to flow anode to cathode. The definition for anode to cathode are all the same. We're going to see that in today's lesson. Uh, but just the sign is different. For a voltaic cell, anode is negative. But for an electrolytic cell, the anode is actually the positive side. And that has more to do with which side do I hook up the battery so the electrons actually move. Uh, we're going to do this uh, in sequence here, starting off with the simplest type of cell. Uh, we're going to get up to, mainly they say up to type 3. We're going to see a type 4 cell. I can call that a type 3 anyways, but basically steadily increasing the difficulty. Fortunately for us, the procedure is always the same. Okay, So for electrolytic uh, cell type 1, uh, a type 1 cell essentially uses inert electrodes. That word inert basically means unreactive. Now, every chemical reacts to some degree, but there's some line where, you know, it reacts so slowly and so minimally that I practically say didn't react. The only two electrodes that we have that fit this category are platinum electrode or carbon electrode. We had seen this uh, briefly when we were talking about the standard hydrogen cell yesterday. Okay? For a type 1 cell, we're going to have a salt. We have NaI in this case here, and they're going to use this terminology here of molten. Molten means melted. It means I have made a liquid of my salt. How do I make a liquid of an ionic compound? It is not by dissolving in water. Dissolving in water is a dissociation process. That's not a melting process. A melting process is taking the ionic compound, taking the lattice, heating it up upwards of 700, 800 degrees or so. You are still breaking apart those ionic bonds, but this thing here stays solid for a long time. That's why we need such high temperatures to actually melt. And the key emphasis here is if we've actually made a like almost like a lava of this ionic compound here, there is actually no water. Uh, we've seen water a couple of times on our uh, redox table. It's definitely for these types of cells that water interferes a lot, and we're going to see some examples of it. Uh, if I really want it to be the ions that are actually reacting of this binary salt here, I want to make sure that there's no water. I want to make sure that it's just uh, any ions and I minus ions. Your procedure, though, is always going to be the same. This part is really, really nice. Your procedure? As mentioned before, I want you to state um, the chemicals present. Tell me exactly the form that they show up in. Okay. So, so far they just said NaI, it's a binary salt, and it's in the molten state. So here's the ionic compound. It starts off as a solid. In the molten state, you've heated it up enough that you've separated the positive from negative, essentially the same as a dissociation, but we're actually going to get Na plus liquid 
and we're going to get I minus liquid. So this is swimming in a sodium iodide solution. There is no water present. Right? It is liquidy. It is sort of filling up, taking up the shape of the container, but there's actually no water present. So just an emphasis here, these are not aqueous. So in that sense here, I shouldn't even say they're a solution. It's basically a liquid made out of Na ions and I minus ions. So when we later on go check the table, I'm going to look for an exact match of Na plus and I minus. Because it's Na plus, I don't have sodium solid. Because it's I minus, I don't have I2 solid. I want to find an exact match. Okay? The electrodes that we set in type 1 salt are inert. So I'm going to make one of these, let's say platinum, one of these carbon. They could have both been carbon. Sometimes they call carbon just graphite. Well, graphite is just carbon. These are just inert. They're just temporary holding places for the electrons, uh, but they don't actually participate in the reaction. So as we just hook this up here, some of the features, uh, we still have our two electrodes. We still have our anode and cathode. Uh, that part there is still true. Uh, the anode is still going to be the site of oxidation. We're going to see this a little bit better uh, now. Cathode is the site of reduction. It's just the location where oxidation occurs. So even though platinum, uh, let's say this is the anode for argument's sake here, platinum was inert. Platinum, chemically speaking, itself cannot lose electrons. But if something swims close to platinum, loses electrons on its surface, the platinum plate is still referred to as anode. It's just the location of where the oxidation occurs. So we still need two electrodes. We, ne we still need some sort of electrolyte. Uh, they at first just called it NaI solution. Uh, we had already broken up. I have Na plus liquid and I have I minus liquid, so not aqueous. Uh, the thing that's uh, new in this voltaic cell here is we need to have a power supply. Remember, this is a non-spontaneous reaction. I can guarantee that uh, when we actually look on the table later on. But it's actually this power supply. I'm using electrical energy to run a uh, chemical reaction. Okay, So let's just try it. I stated the chemical is present. Your only other step is actually just to check the table. Same table as before. Uh, we still have the table written all as reductions here. The best guys reducing are the ones that are on the lowest corner. So you're just going to start here and you go up and you're going to just try to find your matches. The only chemicals this time we have are Na+, I-, platinum, and carbon. Don't worry about looking for platinum and carbon. We already said they're inert. They're going to be so far up on the left side, so far down on the right side, they actually don't react. So in this case, we really only need to look up Na+, and I-. minus. So you keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, by the time I find the first guy, the best guy reducing, I'm already fairly far up the table. On the table is written as an equilibrium. I still want to show it to you as a uh, one-way arrow. So Na plus gains an electron, one-way arrow becomes sodium. I'll quote the voltage. This is a reduction potential going left to right. It's negative 2.71 volts. It's 2.71 volts worse than the standard hydrogen cell. Okay? So that was my only match. Perfect. Now you go to the top here. Up to this point, by the time you find your reduction, the reduction was lower than the oxidation. This time, we're sort of out of luck. This time, by the time we got our reduction, we're so far out the table, I'm still starting on the top right, starting from the reduced form so far, it's oxidation going right to left. Going down, finding your matches here, can I stop at sodium? Well, no, I don't have sodium solid, skip it. Let's keep going here, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, uh, and I eventually run into I-. Okay. So those are the only two ions in, in uh, our liquid, in our molten mixture. Um, so those are our reactions. So on the table, it's in equilibrium. We're going to do a one-way. This is going to be oxidation. I'm just going to copy it out. I minus is going to become half an I2. That makes sure the half equation is balanced. That's actually solid. And we're actually going to have electrons. This is a reduction potential of positive 0 0.54. Going in reverse, I had to flip this around. Now, there was no guarantee that the half cells themselves had to be negative. The one that I'm saying is negative is actually the overall E cell. Uh, the total voltage of the battery, when you do those two things together, uh, negative 2.71 minus uh, 0 0.54, uh, this gives me a negative uh, 3.25 volts. Okay? So this is the first time we're seeing this. Overall, this is not a good battery. You put this in a device, it basically needs voltage to run. Well, that's useless for a battery. This one here means it's non-spontaneous meaning you need to put in at least a positive 3.25 volts to actually run this reaction. Otherwise, this chemical reaction will not happen by itself. Otherwise, the molten would just sit there. In fact, uh, due to some losses, uh, realistically, uh, realistically, uh, probably about some 10 volts is needed. Okay, Because we don't 
transfer energy perfectly into the system even though technically from our table it should be 3.25 uh, there's also going to be some loss along the way here usually we need to put in even more than 3.25 but that's what we can calculate so we're going to hook up the power supply here because the battery's direction is totally up to me um, you can decide which one you want to be anode capping so just for argument's sake here, I'm going to hook up the battery so that the left-hand side is the positive, right? Long line is positive, short line is negative. I still need to hook up this wiring. The electrons are still going to flow through the wire. They're just not going to flow through the wire naturally. It's not like the chemicals would have reacted anyways and electrons are going to be transferred. This time, we're actually using the battery. We're forcing the electrons to actually go through. So the positive side, as I indicated to you earlier, the positive side is the anode, while the anode is the site of oxidation. Let's just read the equation here. This one, I always tell people, don't memorize this. Just read the equation. So I minus swims close to the anode. It's going to solidify itself as I2 and drop off its electrons. So imagine this I minus. It's already in liquid. It's going to swim up close to this platinum. As it solidifies, as it becomes a product, it's actually going to solidify becoming I2 solid. What's going to happen to the mass of this electrode as it deposits more and more iodine? Well, you can say, well, the anode should actually increase in mass. Mass increases because of all this added uh, iodine on the surface. Uh, more importantly, however, we're looking more so at the electrons. The electrons get dropped off at its location. The conducting plate where oxidation occurs is called the anode. Even though the platinum had nothing to do with the reaction, it is still the location of where it happens. Platinum is still referred to as the anode. It wasn't chemically active, but it's the whereabouts electrons were dropped off. We need that side, the electrons we dropped off, the electrons are attracted to the positive side of the battery, assuming that we put in at least that 3.25, more so probably like 10 volts here. I can pull the electrons up against its will, and I can force the electrons down onto the carbon side. Again, carbon is inert. It's not actually going to do anything, but it is going to be the temporary surface where the reduction can occur. Well, what is the reduction? The reduction involves sodium ions swimming up close to the electrons that arrive here, right? They were first dropped off of the anode. They had traveled through this wiring here. They're now on the other side. Sodium's going to grab the electron and become sodium solid. So sodium solid here is also going to deposit here. We should also say in the cathode side, the mass increases as well. Fortunately for us, there is no water around because sodium is fairly explosive with water. Okay, so those are the basics of a type 1 cell. Uh, electrons still flow anode to cathode. It's just we needed this power supply to run the chemical reaction. Basically, maybe, why would I do this? Maybe I have a carbon solid and I want to plate it with sodium. It doesn't naturally happen. Sodium doesn't want to do this. But by providing this voltage, I can actually get that to happen. So we're going to steadily make it harder here. Uh, we're going to look at a type 2 cell. All we're going to do is we're going to steadily make more and more things allowed to react. Okay. So in a type 2 salt here, we actually have an aqueous salt. It could have been NaI again, but this time they gave you NaCl. This time it's aqueous. The implication there, if it's aqueous, is the fact that we have uh, water. Right? So there is water present. Because we're having it look so far on the table, probably water might interfere. We still have our salt that could react. This time it could happen at just room temperature. You can take the plain old NaCl. It's a solid. When you drop it in water, it becomes Na plus ions. This is Na plus aqueous, Cl minus aqueous. It is not liquid, like in the molten case. But still, in a type 2 salt here, we're going to not let the electrodes uh, react. So still, let's make them platinum or carbon. Uh, some other keynotes for you to think about here. Electrolytic, remember, we're running a non-spontaneous reaction. We would expect a E0 to actually be less than 0. Okay. So uh, first, before we actually look mainly at the um, when I actually have the NaCl present, let's just focus in on the electrolysis of water. So this using electricity to actually break apart water. This part here will look um, uh, familiar uh, when we did our decomposition reaction before. We're not talking self-ionization. We're not talking H2O becomes H plus and OH minus. We did that in the acid base chapter. It doesn't do that very well. This time, we're purposely using electricity and we're decomposing this. Well, if water breaks apart, we're just going to have hydrogen and we're just going to have oxygen. I made them diatomic. Um, you naturally would want to balance it, let's say, 2, 2, 1. In this case here, let's just say we want to break up one mole of water. So I have 1 H2. I can bear with the half O2, so be it. Okay? This does not spontaneously happen. 
Unlike the self-ionization where even though the constant is really tiny, water always has the capacity to make H plus and OH minus, this part here has to be uh, you have supplied some external voltage. You've supplied some battery to actually force this to actually happen. Okay? Uh, we also find, based on the self-ionization part, uh, the ion concentrations are really, really low. At 25 degrees, they were something like 10 to the negative 7 molar for a neutral solution. So it means that we're actually not a good uh, conducting solution. So usually what we do is cheat a little bit. Even though really what I want to do is I want to just electrolyze water. I want to rip apart water. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add in an ionic compound just to allow me some more charge carriers, just to improve the conductivity a little bit so the charges can move a little bit freely in the solution so that water can actually do uh, the mix. Okay. So as I mentioned, again, we haven't talked about the NaCl just yet. I just want you to make a list of what are the chemicals present. So we definitely have water. That is our solvent. Okay. Water has the slight ability to self-ionize, not great. Okay. Hydronium and OH minus. Uh, I know that because the Kw is some 10 to the negative 14 at 25 degrees. Okay. So it's really, really uh, low. Okay. What else is there in solution? Again, unfortunately, water is not very conductive. I'm going to toss in some NaOH. You don't need a ton of it, but the NaOH is just used. NaOH here is a solid and it's going to become Na plus and OH minus. It's just going to improve the charge carriers in solution. I chose NaOH in a particular way because the Na is actually not as good. It won't interfere with water's reaction. Those are just needed for higher electrical conductivity. So as we're making a list of what we have, what do we have in solution? We definitely have water. I want to look for that on the table. We have some H plus or hydronium. We have some hydroxide. The NaOH also provides some hydroxide here. We have sodium ions. I do not have sodium solid. Okay. Again, we're going to use uh, inner electrodes, platinum or carbon. Let's make this one platinum, this one carbon. Totally up to us which side we hook up the battery. I'm going to hook the, the anode on the left side. The left side is going to be the positive, negative. So anode is the positive side. The definition is still site of oxidation, site of reduction. But it's this time we just need a battery to force this to happen. Okay. Once you have a list of your chemicals, what you're going to do is you're going to check out your chart. Let's start from the bottom left. Let's find the guys that um, uh, reduce best. And let's see who we run into first. Okay. So as you go up here, right, I oh, I see an H+. Plus, okay. Well, this H plus is just the acidic conditions. I also need oxygen. Well, I can't use that, so keep going. You want to find an exact match here. Oh, I find oxygen and water. Okay, no, again, I don't have oxygen. Just keep going, keep going. Oh, I find an H plus here. Okay, no, keep going, keep going, keep going. And what you're going to end up finding here is H plus in its own reaction. That's actually our standard hydrogen cell. We found the H plus reaction. We actually find the water reaction a little bit later on. Earlier, I had said, uh oh, what about the sodium? Well, again, I purposely chose sodium. You notice it's so high on the list. This one here is definitely going to be a spectator uh, as long as H plus and water are present. So although it's there for so uh, more, more ions for conduction, okay, it is a spectator. Okay? It does not interfere with water's reaction. Okay? So uh, in this reaction, we have our H plus, no problem. Now we go to the other side here. Lithium metal, right, would be good at oxidizing. You go down, what do we have, what do we have? Uh, nope, don't have hydrogen. I did have a little bit of hydroxide, but the concentration wasn't really high to begin with, let alone I need hydrogen, so I need, can't have to skip that. You have to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. You got to go really far down this table, and then finally, okay, yeah, we do have hydroxide. And what we see is, even though we are still finding the best guy reducing and the best guy oxidizing, notice that reduction half reaction is now higher than the oxidation half reaction, that's going to guarantee by the time I get an E cell from these numbers here, the overall E cell will be negative. It should imply to me that this is uh, non-spontaneous. So uh, just with that, I'm just going to show you uh, these equations here. Um, so I'm going to copy out the reduction equation, H plus and an electron. On the table, it's a two-way arrow because I now know which way it goes. It's one way for me. This becomes half an H2. That's a gas. I'm going to emphasize that. This happens at zero volts. It's my standard hydrogen cell. This is a reduction reaction. So where might this occur? Well, anox cared at the cathode is where this occurs. So what I'm saying is there are H plus ions, not a ton of them. The Kw is really tiny. But some H pluses manage to get to carbon. Carbon is a temporary holding place for these electrons. The H plus is going to grab these electrons, and then gonna, they're going to bubble off as H2. 
So we're actually going to see another physical thing happen. We're actually going to see bubbles form. Bubbles form at the cathode. Right? Even though carbon had nothing to do with it. Carbon is an inner plate. It's just a temporary uh, store for electrons. Uh, hydrogen is actually going to bubble on its surface. Okay. Now, what about the other side? On the other side here, we look downwards here. We didn't find a, a reaction until the 2-hydroxide equation. So let's do that. I'm going to rewrite it uh, left to right here. 2-hydroxide, uh, one-way arrow forms half an O2 and water uh, and two electrons. Uh, the reduction potential was a gain of 0 0.40 because I flipped it around, negative 0 0.40. Okay. Uh, now, I know the half equations themselves were balanced, but now that I'm trying to mix and match these two together, I still need to do lowest common multiple. So let's pretend, uh, let's multiply this first equation by 2. The voltage doesn't multiply. Remember, that's already per charge. Uh, so therefore, let me write this out here. 2H plus and 2 hydroxide end up one-way arrow, end up producing hydrogen gas. We end up generating uh, half a mole of oxygen gas, and we have water. The electrons were set up to cancel out, so that's not going to be on either side of the table. And lo and behold, the E cell is 0 minus 0.4, so negative 0 0.40. The battery needs to supply at least negative 0 0.40 volts, uh, well, positive, to actually get this going. Right, currently, it's negative. Uh, we can clean this up a little bit here. Well, what do I get with 2H plus and 2 hydroxide? Well, that's actually just 2 water. And because I now have water on both sides of the equation, we now have the equation as I wanted it. 1 water becomes 1 H2 and half an O2. We've just calculated E0 is negative, so this is non-spontaneous. You need a power supply to actually get this going. Okay. Um, just for comparison's sake, um, we're going to see this. It's going to be convenient for us. It's not like great that we're actually using the H+. plus. The H plus concentration was 10 to the negative 7. It's so tiny in comparison to water for these electrolytic uh, reactions here. What you can do is you're going to find we're going to get the same equation whether we use the H plus reaction by itself or whether we use the water equation. So technically speaking, I'm just going to redo this question for you. Technically speaking, as I started from the bottom left and went upwards, I should run into H plus first. H plus should be the one that reduces. The other two don't reduce at all. Let's say, for argument's sake, well, the H plus concentration wasn't really high. There's so much, if you do the density of water, there's a 50-some molar of water. There's so much more water present, the chances of having H plus swim up close to the electron is not very high. But the waters swimming up close to the electrons here is a lot higher. I'm just going to repeat this. What if I tried to do the water equation and the water equation on the other side? So just uh, humor me for a second here. I have water. It's going to become a half an H2, and it's going to become an OH minus. That happens at a voltage of negative 0 0.83, just so that you can find that um, equation here. So if that's the guy that reduces, sorry, I missed the electron here, so water plus an electron. Uh, again, it's a little weird why I'm doing this, right? Well, if H plus reacts better than it, water should be a spectator. We're just going to see water is really annoying. That's why on the table, they actually give you the water equation, okay? On the other side here, we had found the hydroxide. Technically speaking, that's the one that reacts. There should be no uh, con uh, contradiction here because I have a lot of hydroxide. The NaOH guaranteed it. But just for argument's sake here, let's skip the hydroxide for now and let's skip down to the water. In fact, water does something called an overpotential. Sometimes, even though if you look at the potentials, even though these other guys should actually oxidize before water, experimentally, we actually find water reacts more. So whether you deal with it based on um, the concentration of water, concentration of water is way higher than the H plus or OH minus, um, or you just skip the H plus, skip the hydroxide, and look at the water equation, I just want to show you we end up with the same equation. So let's write this reaction backwards. We're going to have our water equation, one-way arrow. It's going to form half an O2. This is going to generate for me 2H plus and two electrons. That voltage used to be positive 1.23. That's now going to be negative 1.23. Again, there's no telling that the half equations themselves have to have negative. We still need to do the balancing, lowest common multiple, between 1 and 2. So I need to double this equation. And just let me clean this up a little bit here. What do we get? So this is almost like a what if. What if I looked at water? I'm going to get two waters from the first step and the actual water from the third step. I'm going to get three waters total on the left side. I'm going to have 2 times half, so it's going to be 1 uh, H2. I'm going to have 2 OH minus. The other equation I'm just going to copy out. 
just running out of room, so I'm just going to write it right below it. Uh, half an oxygen and 2H+. Plus. Uh, and what's going to happen at this point? The 2 hydroxide and the 2H+, plus, similarly, this part here would just give you 2 waters. I don't want to have 3 waters and then 2 waters. You notice everything cancels out, and we end up with water bubbles to become hydrogen on one side, oxygen bubbles on the other side, and everything else cancels out. Uh, the voltage for showing that one here, the E cell is the negative 1.23 uh, minus 0.83, and this gives me here a negative 2.06. Okay? So sure, that may be the only difference, but otherwise, you notice the equation is identical. Earlier, we had water becoming H2NO2. We also have water becoming H2NO2. Both of them are actually negative. Both of them are actually non-spontaneous. That's probably the only difference of voltage. Okay? They generally don't ask you outside of this first question, like, okay, what's the voltage that I need minimum? Uh, they generally don't ask you to compare the voltage. So long story short for this part, you can actually use the water equations instead of just the pure H plus or just the pure hydroxide, and you'll still end up with the same voltage. Okay? So uh, let's just finish off with this question here. Now we know what water does. That's the interference with the type 2 cell. Let's consider the electrolysis of aqueous NaCl. Again, let's make a list of what we have. Aqueous means we have water. Water, it will self-ionize to give H plus and OH minus. So these uh, ions are always present. Uh, again, just like we had uh, derived through, whether you just look straight at water or whether you look at the H plus OH minus, they both give the same equation anyways, so that's fine. We have an aqueous solution NaCl. I'm not going to find NaCl solid on the table. It's going to have ionized. It's going to become Na plus ions and Cl minus ions. These ones here are aqueous because we are in a water solution. Those two are also ions that we're going to look for. So swimming in my container, we have a ton of water, a few H pluses, a few OH minuses. The Kw is not very big. We have Na plus and we have Cl minus. Those are the five things to look for on the table. Uh, we're still dealing with inert electrodes. Tomorrow we'll come back and we'll make them react as well. Let's say one side's a platinum, one side's a carbon. Let's say for argument's sake here, oh, I put the battery in the other way. Okay, doesn't matter. The positive side of the battery here is always the anode side. So this time the oxidation is going to occur on the carbon side. On the platinum side is going to be the cathode. That's where the reduction is going to occur. Once you have this list though, um, this would have been very similar to the NaI that we did earlier. Well, any ions re react, the Cl minus ions react, but we actually have a big difference because of water. Water actually shows up so many times on the table, it actually uh, screws everything up. Okay? So let's try it. I have my list uh, up above here, and we're just going to make a uh, note. Starting from the bottom left and go upwards, I'm going to find my first match. Can I run this reaction? Well, no. Uh, I don't have permanganate. Can't do that. Uh, I have chloride ion, Cl minus ion. I do not have Cl2, so you have to keep going, keep going. I have H plus, don't have water. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I don't find Na plus until it is way up here. Remember, Na plus earlier was a spectator. I didn't want it to interfere. We actually run into either the water equation or the H plus equation first. Uh, I'm going to just show it to you both ways just to um, uh, explain to you again, oh, it's the same whether you use the water equation or not. Totally okay for you to use just the water equation in, instead of the H plus, even though technically H plus reacts uh, better. On the other side here, let's find our uh, states here. Even though I found Na plus and water on this side, doesn't mean I can ignore them on the other. Sometimes there's a disproportionate reaction. Sometimes it's the same chemical that does both the reduction and the oxidation. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the top right and go downwards. As you go down, can I stop at sodium? Well, no, I don't have sodium metal. Keep going. Uh, keep going, keep going, keep going. I will run into hydroxide again, just like we did earlier. And we'll run into water. And then we don't run into Cl- minus until way down here because the strongest guys are higher up it's going to be the hydroxide uh, reaction. Okay, So again, I'm going to show this to you both ways. Uh, both ways will give you the same answer. Technically speaking, I should be doing, well, H plus is lower on the table. H plus reduces better. So on the first side, that's going to be a reduction reaction. So uh, cathode is the site of reduction. So what I want to say is I want to do an H plus and H plus uh, is going to pick up an electron, and it's going to become uh, half an H2. Okay, that's the reaction at um, zero volts. Okay, 
uh, just to show you that it gets the same reaction. If I skip that, well, the molarity of that H plus is so tiny, let's actually just go straight to water. Okay. So water, again, one-way arrow, ends up forming half an O2. Uh, once I have the other part of the equation, we're going to find that this uh, hydroxide part drops out. Okay. So the only difference is going to be the voltage, as we did earlier. I'm not going to bother with that for now. Uh, but there we go. We have our uh, half reactions. How about the anode? At the anode is the site of oxidation. Technically speaking, I want to do the hydroxide equation. So 2OH minus, that's written on the right-hand side. I want to go to the left. 2OH minus becomes half an O2. Uh, it becomes an H2O, and it becomes a, a two electrons. Right? Make sure you copy everything out. That's at, um, uh, earlier was positive 0.40, so this is going to be negative 0.40. Just a reminder, flip that sign. Again, you're going to get the same equation if you just totally skip hydroxide. That concentration is not high to begin with. Let's just use the water equation again. Water upon oxidizing, water itself will actually create half an O2. It's going to create uh, 2H+, plus, and it's going to create uh, two extra electrons. Okay. So what I want to just show you in this situation here is, although chemically we actually have a salt, we actually have NaCl, because the Na was so poor, at reducing, and the Cl- minus was so poor at oxidizing, it's actually water that actually does both. Those ions just increase the connectivity like we just did earlier. The Na+, plus and the Cl- minus end up as spectators. Okay? More on that in a second. Uh, so let's double this equation. Right? I want to match up the electrons. So what do we get? We get 2H+, plus and 2OH-. minus. This is going to end up becoming uh, 2 times half, gives you just one mole H2. We're going to still have our half O2, we're going to still have our H2O. Uh, remember, 2H plus and 2OH minus, this basically is 2 water. And if I have waters on both sides of the table, I don't need uh, 2. Let's cancel that one. Let's cancel that one. So water becomes H2 and half O2. Now, what if I use the water equation instead? Just to prove to you I get the same equation. We just did this earlier as well. Um, looking at the uh, number of electrons, I forgot to copy down the oxidation here. Uh, this one actually generates 2 electrons as well. So... Oh, sorry, that was for the reduction reaction. Uh, the water equation should actually have uh, water actually gains an electron, so this is actually electron here, and we're actually going to double this equation here, so you times 2. So therefore, I'm going to get two waters plus this water here. I'm going to have three waters total, and then I'm going to have two times half, so I'm going to get an H2. I'm going to get two hydroxide. The other equation wasn't uh, doubled or anything like that, so plus half an O2 plus 2H+. Plus. And we had just saw, <coughs> well, 2OH minus and 2H plus actually is just two waters, and those two waters cancel this one here. So long story short, we get the same equation. I get one water become H2 and O2, or one water becomes H2 and O2 here. Whether you use the actual H plus or the OH minus, um, you actually uh, end up uh, with the same equation. So not only does water interfere, the sodium chloride didn't even have to be there. Uh, it's just there to improve the conductivity. Um, just showing you, you can actually use the water equation instead of the H plus or the water equation instead of the OH minus. Okay. So let's just look back at our equation here. Um, in general, all the electrolytes are already present. We just saw sodium and the chloride. They don't really react. Um, sodium and H plus, these ones here are cations. Cations still try to accumulate. They still try to head towards around the cathode, in this case here, is the platinum, okay? While the anions, the hydroxide and the Cl-, minus, actually accumulate around the anode, so anions go towards anode, that part there is still true. I want to make this uh, little note here. Uh, although, as uh, Cl- minus and OH- minus accumulate, as they build up uh, around the carbon, anode, we had checked it, right? Checked it on the table. It's either the hydroxide or the water. The Cl- minus here shouldn't actually react. This is sort of an exception. Experimentally, we find it actually depends more so on concentration. So this is the last note I'm going to make here. Uh, although the Cl- minus and OH- minus as anions, they accumulate around the carbon anode. Um, uh, OH minus or water should oxidize before Cl minus. Experimentally, 
it actually depends on the concentration. So, so far, if we are at low concentration of Cl-, yeah, the Cl- has no chance. Uh, these, either the hydroxide reaction or the water reaction reacts first. Now, as an exception, if your concentration of chloride is actually higher, so the molarity of the Cl- is actually higher, right? Remember, these are all comparing voltages at standard state. If this voltage is actually very, very high, greater than 25% by mass, they're just going to say, uh, experimentate, they're just going to say uh, a concentrated uh, NaCl sample. If the Cl- is high, uh, the Cl- actually preferentially uh, oxidizes before uh, water. So just looking at the anode reaction then, if your concentration is low, it's either the 2-hydroxide becomes uh, this half O2 and uh, water and two electrons, or using the water equation, water, remember you get the same uh, answer both ways, uh, half O2 and 2H+, plus, water interferes with everything. But at high concentrations, even though the Cl- minus on this standard concentration table here was lower, experimentally this actually uh, reacts first. So experimentally, when you take Cl-, minus, the oxidation reaction is actually between Cl- minus in becoming half Cl2 and uh, this uh, electron here. And therefore, we're actually going to take chloride ions. It already was a high concentration to begin with. We're actually bubbling it off as chlorine gas. You want to be really careful not to poison yourself here. Uh, this one here is going to emit a yellow-green uh, gas. Uh, so just for practice sake here, I want you to try it out. This one here is showing you uh, sort of an exception on the uh, oxidation side. Try coupling that with your reduction reaction, the same reduction reaction. See what you get uh, for the net equation with at low concentrations when the hydroxide or water react, and see what you get with the chloride reacts. There's a lot more practice questions later on as well. Um, if you have any problems, just let me know.